Oh, fuck a duck. I th- oh. Yeah, that's not going to make it into the podcast. <laughs> Birthdays. End of life plans. And my favorite segment, who's is who's? All this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yo, check it out. Check it out. Check it out now. Okay, so you remember how you had a birthday that you're gonna tell us about? I love that shirt. Tell me about your you, shirt. You don't even. You don't even know how much you love it. Tell me. Tell me something else. Ah! <laughs> I put this asshole shirt on for you, my titsy friend. So what you can't, dear see. listener, <laughs> <laughs> dear listener, I have TMJ. And I just unhooked my jaw and dropped it to the table. Oh, my boobs are on fire. These tits are on fire. They are right now. Dear listener, Amy's wearing a shirt (laughs) that looks like, I want to say the frets on the neck of a guitar, as well as the progressive sound bar. It's an EQ board, actually. So, and I may have just, oh, them. No. it's an EQ board. So I've turned it down. So it's not so insane, but it's an LED impregnated panel that sits on the front of a black t-shirt that looks like an equalizer board. And it's, it's audio reactive. So when you make sound in front of it, it goes pew, 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 like it would on your own. A stereo. I can't take my eyes off your tits right now. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off your chest right now. I don't. John would be, I'm going to turn it up. So it'll be more reactive. John would be so proud. Because this also shows us when we're jacking up our audio, when it, when it goes and fills the whole thing with color, I, that's actually wrong. That's bad audio. I cannot take my eyes <laughs> off your chest right now. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, I haven't worn this douchey McGee t-shirt. I think I've, I don't think I've ever worn it. I probably put it on once and said, I can't fucking wear this. How so. do you wash that? Who knows? I've never worn it. it the, thing, the thing unclips. It's like... All those holiday sweaters that light up in all the sorts of various ways. It has a battery pack and a cable that unclips. It's so much so better once you've than all of those it. sweaters. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so much so this, better. This, this douchey shit is just for you, my darling friend. Speaking of birth and days, you <laughs> had both in one. I did. I did. I was born. When people say, I wasn't born yesterday. In fact, I was. Yesterday <laughs> was my birthday. I was born yesterday. A few years before that, but yesterday marks mazel, the date. Mazo, mazo, mazo. Of, Tell my, us all about of it. my travels around the sun. Um, yeah, so uh, I aged and I feel it. But what happened for me was <laughs> I think they're a necessary evil. What do they say? If you're not oh. having birthdays, what's the alternative? You die, right? That's. Oh, that's chi- This is really peppy. So that's, our, Keep it going. that's actually our next topic. But anyway, I love it. <laughs> um, so in these days of COVID-19, you can't really mm. go do. I mean, I felt sorry for winter birthdays that couldn't go anywhere. And before I knew it, my summer birthday's here. And I don't I'm not the kind of person that makes my birthday a national holiday. Uh, my husband has people with whom he works that take off every year and make a I mean, I guess a, a huge to do, a national holiday about it. Everybody has to celebrate. I, I will say that the love you get on Facebook and via text is overwhelmingly joyful. It feels good. It feels, it feels so good. good, especially when you have been in lockdown, sometimes self, you know, self induced, whatever. But it's for everybody to, for over 160 people to say, or post on the timeline, and that's not the text, and that's not uh, just for them to to think of me on that one day is is overwhelming and kind of amazing. So I I did put out a post yesterday, which was quoting a song, "Walking on Sunshine," which is kind of how I felt. And typically, my birthday mid July is ninety four degrees, muggy, and a torrential downpour at some point. And it was beautiful yesterday. It was just a really good good day. So I want to so thank everybody who reached out. 
who has not seen my face other than on Facebook since 1806 when I was actually <laughs> born. <laughs> well, this would have been the first birthday in many a long while that you got to spend with your kids. Yes. Yeah, so yesterday was also supposed to be visiting day at camp. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, so you would have had them anyway. Camp that oh. did not happen. But, you know, yeah. I spent my son's birthday with him for the first time in 10 years and, and mine they spent with me for the first time in 10 years. They're like, we're not used to being nice to you today. So it's we- Yeah, it's, it's when, yes, I get the weird. But I get the weird. Also, we I've avoided people quite successfully for, I don't know, four Your months. Your whole life. Well, Your whole life, yeah. That is actually true. <laughs> <laughs> but especially the last four to maybe even five months. And I had a visitor come see me. Uh, my friend Carrie called called my husband and said, I want to stop by for breakfast. And Stuart said, well, that's fucking stupid because you live four and a half, five hours away. So why don't you just FaceTime with her and she'll love it. And he, she said, no, I think it's important that I show up. And I have a meal and we sit, talk and catch up. But then Stuart asked her everywhere she's been for the last, I don't know, five weeks. Like, give me the last five weeks of your schedule. And, and she did. And, and he's like, all right, this is a great surprise for her. And they hung up the phone. He cleared her. He hung up the phone. And then he <laughs> raced downstairs where I was clipped into a bicycle because you're crazy. I'm stupid and trash talkable, which I didn't think I was, to be honest. Uh, so he says, Melissa, there's a surprise. I know something. I know something. And he melted. He lost his mind. It's so fun. I don't know if you watched Cheers with any regularity back when Kirstie Alley was on Cheers. There's one episode in particular where she's told a secret and she cannot do anything with it. And so she hears the secret at one end of the bar and begins walking to the other end of the bar. Doesn't even get to the other end. She's so (laughs) ready to tell it. Like the length of a bar. So she grabs a handful of saltines that happen to be there and shoves them in her mouth so that while she's speaking the secret, the the crackers are obscuring what she's going, I can't. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, I now have my visual for Stuart. Every fucking time. The secret won't even be formalized in his brain and it's leaking out of one side of his mouth. I gotta gotta tell you. And you say this because this is not your first experience with him no (laughs) and they're so fucking elaborate you would think that someone who puts this much time and effort and energy into planning the fucking surprise would understand maybe the core mechanics of how surprises work which includes surprise (laughs) no he he sort of realizes he's like okay i've ticked everything off the list except the surprise let's get it right now and so he runs to the person and spoils it what's super interesting (laughs) is he knows i hate surprises but mostly he insists on making them for you but mostly i hate them when i know something is coming but you won't tell me what i want to hurt you when you're like well i know something you don't know well i'm about to rip out your short hair so i'm gonna know something you don't know as well uh, Stuart knows something that you don't know for some total of it couldn't even finish that word because that's how long it would take him to spill the beans so he tried to be super sweet about it. look I know you're really crazy, and I mean that in the best way. About, <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> about you know being near people who've been near people. So I, I, I don't I don't want to ruin the surprise, but Carrie's coming. And I'm like, uh, so here here I, I don't want to ruin the surprise that I'm ruining at the, in the current moment. But <laughs> but let me eat these saltines and whistle. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Right. I love this. So she, so she came so she came down to visit. Which, which became, he, he told her she couldn't do that for four hours. So she came for dinner the night before my birthday. We had a really great time. And that evening we FaceTimed with all of the girls, dear listener, that you have sung about, heard about, known about, or most of them. And it was, it was really, it was the love. I feel the love. It's really real. And so thanks. It was kind of awesome. And then she went to sleep. Well, we got her drunk. And then she went to sleep, woke up, had a cup of coffee, and hit the road. She's crazy. She's crazy. She's crazy. But in the very but you're best worth way. It. No, you're super worth it. Very you're best way. Worth it. So birthdays. Amy, last year mm. you were supposed to have a birthday that was um, <clears throat> epic is the word I'm looking for. Right. You would, have, you would have blown the shofar. Do you know what that is? No. So, you know, back in. I see it a lot. I see it. And I always think, is that like, is that like a club? 
Should I be in that club? I love that shirt. Um, you're going to need to take a picture of that shirt and on Thursday post it. <laughs> we'll do a little video because it's an action. It's an action thing. Tell me what a shofar so, is. Is that a Jew thing? Back in biblical days, you're not going to believe this. They didn't text. What? And they didn't tweet. How did God speak to the to the flock? Well, more so, how did how did you say to your kids, get your fucking ass home, it's dinner time? That's or, right. Or, I don't know, how did you communicate with somebody who went out with the flock? To, to, well, I don't want to tell you what I think people did with their flock back then. Hey, 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 hey. hey so what they hey. did was they had a ram's horn. Ooh. And oh, it's all coming back yeah. to you now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. So for your epic birthday i figured you'd take out the shofar and you would tequila and you would let everybody know it is time um to to descend upon you know north kakalaki and we that's it all had plans to to come and we had flights almost booked we were just about to check <laughs> book now and right. you pulled the plug on that epic celebration. Yeah, I mean a year in advance, but yes. Cuz it was it was for the big 5. Oh. Do, 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 do. That's right. And it was honestly the lead up to it was getting to be so I was like, you know what guys, no. And then everybody's like, you can't say no. Let's do something alternate. And then, you know, months and months would keep going by and people going, but I got to book a fucking flight, so hurry up. And I was like, do you know what? No is still no. It's going to be no. And so I did pull the plug on it. Happily so. I'm curious as to where you're going with this. I have more to add. So here comes this year. <laughs> yeah, here it comes. And you have a birthday imminent. I guess I do. My son told me that. I couldn't remember. And it's sad because he's like, I don't think we should really do anything for my birthday this year. And I looked at him. And simultaneously, it's like in Hamilton, I had, you know, realized three same truths at the Very exact same, same time. time. I just looked at him and I was like, you are so mature and sweet. And fuck, you have a birthday? Because like <laughs> like, I didn't remember. Oh, I guess I do too. Whoops, I agree. I don't think, I think you're right. I think you're right. Because I was like, fuck, is that now? <laughs> When's his birthday? It is the day before mine, which you will not say on air. Which I will not say on air. Wow. Right. Which, so, which is also a yeah. friend of ours. <clears throat> yes. And I've mentioned this before. So in my household, birthdays are not really a bam, thing in my bam, life. Bam. Birthdays are not really a thing because in my immediate family, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, before I had kids, uh, there are some total of eight birthdays that fall within a two week span in the middle in in July. And then the same thing happens around Christmas to New Year's. So it's the birthday bonanza parts one and two. And it just never feels like. Yeah, I remember watching Petey on video yeah, acquire yeah. gifts and then maybe seven minutes later acquire gifts. And I thought, yeah. How is that kid ever going to have a normal life? <laughs> it's, yeah. And so it's like, bip, 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 bip. raise a toast to this one down. Raise a toast to this one down. Raise a toast to this one down. It just gets annoying. So we would, I'm eating cake. So we would just, you know, plan. Let's all go and have a, a group celebration and we'll have a big party and then everybody enjoys it. And nobody cares whose name is on the cake or that there's a cake. I mean, you just sort of have gotten over it from a really long time ago. <laughs> These depression era birthdays, right? 30 kids share the same cake. So I'd never have paid much attention to any of that stuff to my shame. So I've raised my kids, sadly, to not, this just doesn't turn into, and they all sort of fell in the same category. I've got one that is adds to the December club. I've got one that adds to the summer club. So that same list continued to just exponentially grow. And our, it seems like our my siblings' kids did the same That's thing. That's crazy. So, so, yeah. So I've only got one outlier <laughs> in our whole family that isn't in that bracket. So birthdays are kind of like, pfft. anyway. So having said all of that, uh, I did, in my many months of, you know, COVID hole, think to myself, well, you know, Maybe we can do something alternate or maybe maybe this is the year or this and that. because there's a local uh, I have a friend here who their life circumstance has they've fast forward to they have a band now. Right. So it's a four piece band. And I'm like, oh, they sure do. 
And they sing, and I went to support them and sat, you know, out in the middle of a field too far away, being able to, you know, hey, I can kind of hear it. You know, it's like, that's how you do things now. And every song except for two, I knew them word for word. And I was like, oh, they're singing my set list. That's kind of interesting. They don't have a horn section, but I know horns. So I was thinking, oh, part of my birthday plan was to bring a band that I love down here and then maybe do a pickup band, have it be a day of entertainment for everyone. It was going to be, it was my 50th birthday. So it was going to be, I had It was Amy like Palooza. A, there's a theater troupe. I was going to basically take over this, this my whole backyard and this other side park-like section of the neighborhood, take it over for the whole day, have food truck come, pay for all, the, so people could have food truck, have revolving band, and then there's a theater troupe that comes and they do like a, a street festival style theater Whoa. troupe, have them perform. It was the whole, th- yeah, it's, it's called Paper Hand Puppet Company. So they were going to, everybody was going to come. It was a huge thing. And it was like a wedding, bat mitzvah, you know, and it t- was turning into four college payments. It was just nuts. And I, at the time, thought, this is so crazy to spend this kind of money for any one thing. Even remove the fact that it's all about me, which it wasn't ever. It was all about a party, but it just seemed so nuts. And then it became very clear that it was like, this is not, I got kids going to college. This maybe isn't, if I can't do it the way I want, let's scale it back. And then it became, well, if I'm scaling it back to who cares, then it's a fucking who cares. So why am I doing it? And I, because I don't fucking care. And it just, so I was like, the pressure and oh I forgot to say you know three people absolutely can't come on this day and then five people absolutely can't come on the alternate day and then one person can only come it was just it was like the logistics of this fucking thing were getting to be so stressful and not happy birthday right so I was like all of y'all can fuck and off and I don't care and that would be my favorite so I was just gonna and I also said I'm a huge procrastinator so let's put it off till next year that felt like the best birthday ever well next year is here and I'm not I'm not doing any of that shit if I didn't have money last year let me tell you how much money I have now that's how much right. it was, that it was, was silent. my question because <laughs> we and I assumed that my kids would be at camp this year it would be my last year without kids <clears throat> and I was ready to travel <laughs> well <laughs> Best laid plans, oh, right? What do they say? Life is what happens when you take a poker up the ass. You that's right. Paper puppet that's hand right. up your butt. That's yeah. right. That's right. Stick my hand up your ass. Work your mouth like a puppet. That's what life is doing to me right now. Yeah, but in that shirt, everything's a little bit better. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm. We're gonna take some video. You'll see it. I promise. So. Not so much for your birthday this year? No, but happily so. For a, for a hot second, I thought, I could do something with this local band. And then I was like, I can't. I can't. I'm struggling. Right. I'm struggling right now. So I certainly don't want any spotlight put on myself or anything about me. It's it's stressful. Getting together with people to have a hot dog is stressful. Do you think th- there is no gathering? If, if anything, my mother is having the biggest birthday this year. And she already called with reinforcement of my father to say months ago to say, guys, please don't, it, it, this is not a gentle request. We are saying we, we, we are not celebrating your mother's birthday this year. So please do not do anything. We don't want a zoom call. We don't want anything out of the ordinary. That would actually be worse. Let's not do it. Let's just decide not to do it. We'll put it off. She's 80. Okay. So in my family, my father's father's father so his grandfather died at 42 oh God and his bless. father's and his father died at 42 so what? it's actually Stop. three Stop generations that. going back I don't want that to happen they all died at 42 so my father said what your mom said or your dad said about your mom we are not acknowledging we are not it's this is just happening it's passing because I don't want to die and if I don't acknowledge it maybe it won't happen 42 came, I mean, he is like a two and a half time heart attack patient, whatever. But he didn't acknowledge it for a really good reason of everybody else died. So I'm going to look to the left, look to the right and hope nothing happens. Right. What is the reason right. that your mom, who has all of this b- big, beautiful family, does not want to <clears throat> see all of their tiny faces on a Zoom call at least? Why? We, because Zoom calls are fucking awful are. and and nobody does it right. And it today. doesn't 
it doesn't work out the way that you want. I, I've been on Zoom calls so with 64 people. I've been on Zoom calls with 64 people. It's It doesn't work. I've been on Zoom calls with three people. Yeah, yeah. When you have to have a lot of people on a Zoom call, how many people do you know for an 80th birthday? 64 would be like a third of the people that would come to this birthday. Come on. It's your fucking 80. Yeah, but not That's just a lot of people. Like, she has to do something. It's a big birthday. And- we will do something. Okay. My point is, okay. my point is, please don't plan... Please don't Stuart surprise us. Okay. Please don't plan it. anything. We're not letting you in, so don't come to the house. Don't travel anywhere. We're not going to be doing anything here anyway. We're going to treat it. We're. It was intended, as that always is with my parents, to take the pressure off. Okay. We to to clearly acknowledge this is not this is not the game of oh don't think about me or oh it's okay write whatever amount you want or I'll pick up the check or whatever dumb games people play with each right. other. I don't can't think of any right now, but you know what I'm getting at. This was not the pretend. I'll say it, but what I really want is, no, what they really wanted is not the burden of having to deal with people on the lawn that can't come in or the thing that arrives or seeing us in there. This is the thing that drives the stake right through their their hearts, spending money on them at a time when they're very sensitive to everybody needing to have money in a different pocket. You know, don't don't spend it on this. And the answer was not because we don't care that mom's 80. It is because we're going to do it when we can do it. Because we have time. We are we are reasonable, logical, optimistic, healthy people. And when this gets back to a settled down state, then we'll do it. Will you do this that This day too? will pass and then we'll come back. Will huh? you do that too? About myself? Yes. Sure. I don't care. It's because it's not about myself. Do I want to have that big that big yeah. party? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah Can yeah, we yeah, send yeah, your yeah, mom yeah. for her 80th a dick in a box that says eat a dick? Yeah, I, I think that would be probably the worst possible thing that could ever happen. Why? Do you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would send it to know. my mom. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not doing that. You're oh, not doing all that. right. No. So don't give me her address. Fine. I won't. Don't. It's not. That's not the kind of joke that would work. It's not even. That's gross. Don't do so that. So Amy took a look at our board for today and I put up both, you know, my birthday <laughs> and do you have end of life plans? Um, and this came up in our house and she's like, this is so like dreary. And why, why do we have such a shitty board? I'm like, first of all, I think everybody deals, especially our age with parents who are dealing with, you know, aging and, and sometimes illness, sometimes chronic illness, sometimes hold on siblings who want their half or third or quarter who are. Yeah. So, so the questions came up because I have a brother that I don't acknowledge who seems to want his third now. <laughs> he seems to Oh, want. for fuck's sake, Donald Trump. Yeah, he seems, he seems to want. So he's, he's, he's asked for money in the past and we're like, yeah, I don't even know you. So our, my, uh, you know what that reference about Donald Trump is since we don't talk politics here. Did you catch it? Wanting the money now? Yeah. Do you know about that? No. So I'll just very two sentences quickly. Donald Trump, president of the United States, his niece has published a tell-all book in which she recounts the story of uh, Donald and many others cutting off family members' access to health care that the Trump organization had agreed to pay over an estate dispute because they wanted to, when somebody died, they wanted to write that person out of the family entirely so that all of the descendants would get no money. Yeah. So it's it's a who cares. It's somebody's personal drama. It's just gross. But it, it's reminiscent of... You already got that much fucking money, and this is how you're going to, just for fuck's sake, you want a third now? I'm still walking around. I'm here. I don't know who your brother is, but I would kick him in the ankle really hard with the toe of my shoe. But I thought it was funny. Why are we talking about him? What's his name? Jerk? No. They call him Uncle Douchebag is what they call him in our (laughs) house. Oh, Golly, yeah. so he's just winning friends it's and influencing it's all the people. Which, which made me think, you know, I only have two kids and, and I have, <laughs> I want to make sure that everything is, is taken care of for them. I want to make sure that we have something to give them. And then Stuart's like, fuck that. We are living off of and we're going to make sure they get into college so we don't have to do that. Do you have plans? Do you have a directive? Do you have anything? Yeah, yeah, we do. And am I getting your kids? No. Uh, We have to update it. Actually, I looked at my husband two days ago. That must have been nice. And had the sad conversation to say, I think we need to pull out all those documents and update them. Because when we wrote them, um, 
Yeah, yeah. And so we've got we've got children in the custody of of households that are um, marriages that are no longer intact. We've got you know things things have changed. Wouldn't that be funny? because so, if you die and somebody who's not a member of your family anymore, who Donald Trump has cut off financially and is not a descendant, winds up with your children because it's in your directive. Well, it's here's how we did it. We broke it down in terms of there, and I think I've talked about this before. Be very brief. We know that there are people in our life and in our kids' lives who will never, ever, ever accept being removed from our kids' lives. Even if we're gone, they will never leave our kids' lives. And we know people who, if we're not around and if, if things start to disintegrate, our kids will never see or hear from them again. We just, we know and that. And not in an ugly family. way. <laughs> not in an ugly way. It's just things, people will drift apart. That's what happens when you've got connectors and people who, you know, are holding hands with a connector. The connector dies and so does the connection. That's that's not, a, that's not an ugly fact, thing. yeah. It's just a fact. Okay. So, I mean, they'll be there, but not in the same way and, you know, miss lots of things. Okay. So we were very thoughtful about placing um, this person gets control of the money and this person has custody of the kids in a way so that we were forcing a connection. Yeah, we did that Like too. we were, we were, we that. were forcing, forcing people and we're also sharing the burden and the responsibility. So it's like, you all going to talk to each other. You always are going to talk to each other, but guess what? I'm going to force that shit because ha ha, you important. don't get the ice cream. Right. So yeah. So, but all that stuff is stupid because you know, the youngest is, is a rising seventh grader. So to have this directive that all three of them go to live in a place that isn't the place where anyone lives anymore needs to be maybe rethought. So that's the part that has to be. And in, 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 oh shit. Oh shit. The top one's going to be 18. So he doesn't even fucking count anymore. And and he can have custody of the other two. No, no, he can't. But, um, not according to me, but, um, all right. Yeah. So obviously we have to do some updating. Yeah. But we do have them. I don't know anybody who doesn't. I don't know anybody who has a 529 plan who doesn't have end of life plans already. They kind of go, you have a will, you have your 529, you do your whatever, all that shit. So if you're saving for college and you don't have life insurance or, hey, please don't pull the plug. And P.S. I put my best friend on there along with my sister because my sister to make end of life decisions for me. No way. She loves me, but she's fucking heartless. So, uh, you know, I needed to have Janine in there to be like, Whoa, let's wait a minute. Let's look at the medical situation, not just because you want to kill your sister. Your sister's heartless? <laughs> in, a, in a very loving way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she's she's not heartless. She's she's ruthlessly logical when it comes okay. time to, yeah. yeah, that shit's done. Set it ablaze! Yeah. Like that's, so it's that's not where, your kids. No. No. To do what? Pull the plug on yeah. me? Um, I have one kid. My kids were very. My kids were very little when we set this up. My kids were were babies. It's time to carriages. update it. Why you put you gave your kids charge of pulling out your plug, and they are also the beneficiary of your money. Uh, conflict of interest. Why don't you put that shit together, yo? Yeah, we have one kid who who is the heart, and one kid who is the wallet. <laughs> we have we have one kid we're definitely not putting in charge of pulling the plug. That's the wallet kid, right? We figured it out, I think. We do also need to update because we're in a different stage of life than we were. I have a 17-year-old, and, and it's just different. And I don't have anything to leave them anyway but debt. Sorry, dude. That's how my mom likes to tell it. She says she's she's uh, she wants to slide into home plate with nothing but dust. She wants to burn up all her Does money. She, I'm like, go for it, gal. Stuart. Does she – did she pick her favorite kid to take care of her? Are you in there <laughs> – there is no favorite kid. We've already talked about it with them because, sadly, my husband's father passed away way too early. He was at least in his 70s, but way too early and for no good reason. Uh, so when my parents witnessed us going through that as my husband having to be the executor and all the rest of this business and how painful it was, they immediately locked in some crazy end of life everything like they they went out of their way to say we have prepaid for all of it we've prepaid for the cookies at the wake like everything is fucking done it will not touch you in any way other than the emotion and p.s here's where all the papers are and all three of you kids are co-equal everything co-equal so, everything okay. co-equal everything yeah 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 all right so we all have to so we're gonna have to figure out the financial headache together which is just super fun but it's i mean how of course it of course we're co-equal everything we're the fucking kids what are we going to do? Yeah, I think, I think that's the default unless somebody puts in otherwise. We've had some family 
drama where there are two kids and the, the parents are gone and one kid is put in charge of another kid's money because they had some limitations and and the the spouse of that other person freaked the fuck out. I have to ask my sister in law for money for it was it was really ugly and and the woman was like, I, I don't want control of this. I don't want anything to do with this. This is this is blood money. Get out of my face. Well, and so much of that stuff, if you've not been through it before, and I've only been through it on the sidelines while my husband did it, because it's his, even though it affects me and my kids, but it's his, I think of. So much of that is there's a logic to it in the sense that it really is easier to have one person do it. It's it's actually a gift to make one, whatever, it's a, it's a release of a burden on the others to make the one person do it, but that also has to come with trust, right. and there's this weird emotion tied right. up in money and all this other stuff, and... Uh, the decisions, we're still making decisions. Frankly, it's not done. It's not done. It's been going on six years and it's still not done. And there are pieces that wow. can never be, that won't be done until, you know, some other circumstances change. And I don't want them to change. So, well, I want, you know, because there's a living partner involved. I want you to know that my parents have chosen their favorite child. Is that you? No, it's my husband. Who's <laughs> <laughs> not even their child. Well, yes. I mean, honestly, if there was someone in our family who was like a financial broker or something, something I mean, there's also a skill level. And Stuart seems to me to be pretty, you know, like needle dick tightened savvy. up about that shit. So we're going to use the word savvy and not needle I'm sorry, dick. sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll use the word thick, savvy. And yes, thick, they, thick, I believe. Thick. Yeah. <laughs> I believe dick. Dick, dick, dick. Thick. I believe that they did choose me for this because I'm married to Stuart. So they couldn't put him necessarily on there as their favorite child, which we all know. Do you, are you the youngest? I am the youngest. That's also a, that's also a consideration. Frankly, you going to live the longest. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of logic to that. That was a question posed to me. I am the youngest. And there was, you know, okay, do you want to, this is what's typical because that's the longest legacy. You don't, you know, that way you don't have to change it, but you know. So I saw a post on Facebook this week that said, teenagers are assholes. That's true. Fact. Uh, this is from a, a friend of mine who has 12-year-old twins that are about to turn 13. Boy or girl. And both. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right. So she posted, this is the worst. And I said, yeah. Okay. Well, here's what I'm telling you. Every year... Is the worst. <laughs> That's right. In a, Happy birthday. This is the in worst In a new year. And, and previously unpredicted shittier way. The year that was the best that everybody calls the terrible twos because that's a complete misnomer. Terrible doesn't happen till three when they're talking back and telling you you're a fucking dick. In other words, but you know what they mean when they say it. Um, th so three. Three starts, and every year subsequently is the worst year ever. <laughs> you can look back and find joy in every one of those years. But I will tell you, when I write my book, which will be called Every Year is the Worst <laughs> Year Raising Children, <laughs> trademark pending, um, yeah, every year is the worst year. You can tell me a story that will make me feel sad for you, but my kids are ahead of yours, and I had those horrible experiences, and I will tell you, haha, it gets worse. <laughs> Every year is the worst year. Oh, man. You have three really separate stages that you're going through. <sighs> Mine is one stage, boy and girl, and it is elongated because they're 13 months apart, so kind of like that diapers Oh, I'm getting one out of diapers, but the other ones, like it's every stage is long. But are they so in the same feel. grade in school or are they, they're separated by a grade year, right? They could be in the same grade, but they are not. Yeah, I, I uh, thought, they, I'm not asking, I thought that they were two different grade years. Yeah. Okay. That helps. Yeah. That helps. My son, the older one is the youngest in his grade. Right. And everybody said, why don't you just hold him back? So he has same. more advantages, same. but same, if same. I held him back, they'd be in the same grade. Because I'm stupid and don't know anything about birth control. I saw, my husband saw where that baby came from. My son was nine pounds, six ounces. I think he took he a class on it. Isn't again. he certified? Yeah, it's. I don't blame you. I was convinced after what he saw, he would never touch me again. Oh, he's got that thick dick. He can't leave you alone. What can I tell you? That's why everybody well, wants him to be the executor of their will. That might be That's it. it. 
thick dick. They want him to write it with his dick. So, oh, Stuart, I'm so sorry. <laughs> He's loving this. Are you kidding? I'm trying to make up for the needle dick comment. Well, you just <laughs> consider yourself forgiven. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So every year, Leslie, comma, is the worst year. <laughs> and I will tell you that, yes, 12 e 13 sucked. And 13 came with in a Jewish family preparing your kids for a B'nai Mitzvah and, um, you have to practice. You have to study. You're always on their ass for something. They're always trying to get away with something. There's always a tension that is unfair, unbelievable, and just more than you think you can handle. And right now, in my house, it is SATs and college essays. Now, Many families say, well, my kids filled out their applications. Like, that's what my parents would say. I filled out my college applications by myself. I wrote my essays. They weren't really great, but I got into colleges. They figured it out. It was a very different time. I get it. Don't tell me. But right now, guess who's writing some college essays again? I hope it's not you. I really do. I would, I would, I acknowledge and allow and encourage editing. And here's the reason that I say that. A good friend, Michelle, actually pointed out to me, she uh, she was able to share, she's got a story, a personal story that has enough bumps in it that she was did get into any college anywhere. She could write crap on a page because her paperwork would, would be the launching pad, right? And she said, but that's not true for these kids who have a great education, come from a stable home, have, you know, affluence, privilege. have privilege, have all the things, right? Those kids are in a bucket, and guess what that bucket entails? It entails a support system that the colleges, this was her point of view, and I agree with her opinion, which is all it is as a parent. She said colleges expect the support system to step in. So if you were in that privileged bucket and you don't have some level of editing, wink, some edit, some level of a professional sniff test on your submission, you'd look like an imbecile right? They're, you're going to stand out. So it's in the worst way. So it there is no expectation that your college counselor and your teachers and your parents and your uncle who happens to be a board member at the college where you want to go haven't all seen and read and uh, commented on your essay that you've also taken several months to pull together. The expectation is all, all that did occur. So if it doesn't, you're just not even participating in the game the way it's meant to be played. That's That was her point of view. And I was like, oh, because my plan was originally don't touch it. Don't touch it. You're out of it entirely. This kid's going to rise or fall on his own, which he's going to do anyway. But this kid's going to rise or fall on his own, even if that makes you nervous like crazy for two solid years of planning for this stupid stuff. And she said, no, the grades are where he rises and falls on his own. The scores are where he rises and falls on his own. The essay is no different than does he show up to the interview wearing a jacket and tie and have brushed his teeth and hair? Because if you can't get that level done in, in your support system, then what are you doing, right? The support system is supposed to edit the document, not write. I think editing is very different than writing. It should come from the kid. It should be their best attempt, their draft, and then go through it together and say either give the pointers for them to go back and edit it or fucking edit it yourself. So having said all of that, I will hear your response, and then I have another piece to add. There's tension. I mean, we have an SAT score that's fine, but we've signed up for the next one and we are waiting to take it again. And he doesn't want, they don't want to prepare. They don't want to, I, I really feel like this, this uh, home quarantine has made them lazier because apathy is growing. They're just laying there. And I, I can't, it's every once in a while, I freak out because I'm trying to raise functional, successful human beings that have problem-solving skills. So when my husband calls my daughter and says, I need room in the outside freezer to put mommy's ice cream cake for her birthday, and she looks at me with panic in her face because nobody in our house knows how to use a phone unless it's on speakerphone, which is fine. So we're not going to get ear cancer from from these phones because everything is, is, I mean, projected for everyone to hear. 
So she looks at me like, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, well, let's think it out. How the fuck do you make room in a freezer? Let's see. What what can we do? So I want them to have problem solving skills, which I don't think you get from one hand in your pants and one hand on your device. Like I don't feel that they are that there is an opportunity to rise. So when I create those opportunities, like guess what? Today we're studying for SATs. Today we're asking for more of ourselves. And maybe that's the Peloton talking. But nonetheless, you're fucking teenagers and you should have the energy for months. You shouldn't drop the way I do after being clipped on for 30 minutes and fall off the bike. Like you really, there should be more to them, more energy, more interest, more motivation. Well, there's way and- more in there than there is about SAT, uh, whatever you call college essays. So let me put the cap on the pen for the college essays and then we'll unpack all the rest of that shit because that's not related. That's not. Or it's related to something else. In terms of the college essays, I stand by everything that I said, and I'm going to add this other piece for perspective. I did edit. I mean, it was yeah. a conversation and then editing. Yeah, that's of course, right? And the conversations as they are expected around what topic, even which question did you select and why? Because this other question might be have a better answer in your personal circumstance. All of that involvement, encouragement, yeah, that's expected, and you should do that and not look back. The college is expected. So, but here's the final, the final piece of perspective on that stuff. So two things happened. One, my son at the very last minute um, had to write some of the colleges don't conform to, you know, most of them accept one general uh, application. So you can, you can pretty much fill it out and then customize it here, here, and here. And that's it. Go. Customize it there, there, and there. Go. Some of them don't conform at all, and you have to customize everything right down to the six questions that they want essays for, right? So we had to do that twice. Two of the six colleges, he had to completely invent a new answer. And the questions were dumb, right? So I was like, go, 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 hurry up, just spit it out. And, and those were very short form, 250 words. That's nothing. That's a, that's a, that's a, I don't know how you can get your point That's a crap. Well, it's because it's, how do you feel about Mondays? That's a stupid question. You don't need 250 words to say that's a stupid question. Next. So anyway, so those are the kinds of. How do you feel about, is that real? Yes. How do you, that was Auburn University. How do you feel about Mondays? We're applying. <laughs> that's it. Among We're other applying. questions. I think it's because it's, it's such a dumb question. It's the kind of thing where you've got to, you've got to get creative to come up with an answer that's worth reading and that says something about you and, and you didn't recycle this from anywhere else. Like it was, it was, okay, I'm going to, it's the curveball interview question. Anyway. And they had other ones that were reasonable. So blah, blah. He crapped that stuff out. This is point one. He crapped that stuff out and it was delightful. And it spoke, it, it was as if he was in the room talking to the person and I thought, this is completely you, kid, and I love it, send it. And it was the stupidest, wackiest, perfect, intelligent, quizzical, you can tell it came right out of his brain. It, it was right, you know? So that felt good. It wasn't labored over that felt right. And he got in. Uh, he got into all, all of them except for one where he was uh, waitlisted. So it, all six, right? And I count a waitlist as a yes. One of them that was waitlisted actually came, he got waitlisted in two. And one of them that was waitlisted came back and said, we changed our mind. Can you come? And I think that has to do with probably COVID. But anyway, who cares? I'll take it. It's another yes. And we're not going there anyway. So fucking you. So, okay. The next piece is because scholarships, after he got into his dream school, they also have a separate scholarship application, and I didn't even bother with it because I was like, good Lord. Okay, so after the fact, planning for it, I see that some of the scholarships for his college aren't announced, or the deadline is August for fall. And I thought, oh, so I think I read it wrong. It probably means a whole year away. But anyway, so I was like, okay. So I went in, and I said, uh, let me take a look at this and see what's there. We don't have access to the application you've submitted, right? Great. I thought his questions, I'll just lift the answer he's already done, stick it over here, and if he gets a scholarship, great. Good job, kid. Okay. So I'm grabbing the essays that he wrote that at the time I was sweating bullets over, thinking this isn't nearly good enough. I don't even, oh, my God, oh, my God. And so I'm reading it months later to put it in this scholarship application. And the essays were so stupid and great and so, in some cases, obvious of so many hands wrenching over them. You could tell the one, there's like the flagship essay. You could tell it had eight editors on it. You could just tell by reading it cold. And then the other ones that he wrote himself were obviously from uh, 
16 and a half year old, 17 year old boy's mind. They were more organic. More... It was of him. And even even not just the not those just the syntax, not just the way of expressing, but the pattern of the thoughts and and approaching it from this kind of it just it was you could tell when you read it. And I'm here to tell you, it didn't read great, but it read like a student with a particular promise. And your child will do the same thing. And that what everybody says and I didn't couldn't acknowledge or absorb you hear it and you think oh I get that I understand that you sit in all those lectures and you listen to all these people and they tell you and they right. tell you and they tell you it's always the same sentence right we're looking for your child to come through that's what we're looking for we're trying to see that child because they read every one of these brochure back essays wine bottle label essays you know trying to say this isn't Boone's farm this is the best thing you're ever going to drink right no Oof. yeah so when I, w when I stepped all the way outside of that bubble and came to it again and looked at it, I was like, oh, that's why he got in. Because he's on, he's on the paper. He's on the, he is on the paper. You can, you can see it. So e warts and all. There were typos. Right. There were typos. Ooh. Typos. Clearly typos. And he got in. And he didn't get into small schools. He got into very big deal so I'm just saying, you don't have any idea what anybody else is submitting. You don't have any idea what else they're looking for. Is it a portfolio? Is it, in some cases, the number is the only thing they care about. You could have, you could have the best essay anyone has ever written, and they will reject you. In other cases, it doesn't matter what your score is. It's all about the essay. So it's just put your best effort and then put it to fucking sleep. And a boy, a boy I used to date wrote an essay for college about how to turn it's a how-to they asked for sure. at the time yeah, sometimes how to popular. turn a styrofoam cup inside out and his description of how to turn that cup inside out got him into harvard so that was pretty impressive yeah because i'm already thinking i don't know how to do that not without breaking yeah. it yeah you should find it it's a good essay um so leslie the answer is every age is the worst age <laughs> and then the next but don't worry because next year will be awful. and don't worry because every age is the best age so there you go there are joys in there but every age that's is the, the book worst we're going to trademark and write we're going to have a side by side left page right page so that when the book opens you'll have why this year is the worst and then on the other side why this year is the best and then you turn the page because it's true. Right. It's fucking right. true. We'll do full chapters on that. It's fucking true. Um, it says here on the board that you joined a new religion. I did. I'm actually, I'm, I'm a terrible acolyte, but I ha I'm attempting to join this new religion. Oh my gosh. I saw this the other day. It's called the Nap Ministry. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. It is the Nap Ministry and it is... Um, I think it was started, I, it was definitely started by a black woman, but I think it was with the sole purpose of saying, you deserve a rest, black people. And so it is nothing but, be, I want to say glamour shots, which is the wrong thing. You know on Instagram, when you see those really stylized, beautiful interior scenes, or people who are traveling and it looks so luxurious, like, uh, you know... The highest end, even everything, it's like the, the color of the sky outside coordinates with the yeah. shirt, like everything. Yeah. It's that style of photography with beautiful people asleep in like she would set up, mm. set up like a giant canopy bed with flowing white um, curtains on it and then have it blowing in the breeze in the middle of a meadow and then have somebody sleeping there with like, you know, flowers and chocolates. It was just amazing. And it's just nothing but pictures of sleeping, people sleeping. Amy, you had me at no. <laughs> it's a real thing. She's like, you just, and she writes this blog. She's like, let me tell you how this works. And honestly, it's so wacky. She's like, I took two weeks off of work so that I could catch up on my, my rest. And I'm, here's how I'm doing it. And watch me as I go. And I'm like, are you kidding? You're really doing this? So she doesn't have kids or dogs because even the evening leading to my birthday at 1.45 in the morning, Shirley, our smallest canine, decided yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm sleeping in this crate anymore. And she used her teeth to open the crate, what? the metal crate that locks, by the oh. way. She got out and jumped into bed. So the jarring sound of that metal wrestling in the crate and her then putting her ass in my face ruined that whole day. So I thought, okay, I am going to nap today. I can only nap when I sit down to watch TV or do something. I cannot nap when I sit down with the purpose of napping. This nap ministry 
Do they provide down comforters, chocolates, and flowy linens? I'm not kidding. She provides prompts. So it's this idea of, you know, she's got like a thing if you want like a yoga practice, if you want to hear somebody talk you into sleep, if you want. It's the whole thing. It's about the glorification of slow your shit down. Feels like the self care meditation more than it feels like a religion. No, and that's it's it they they do it in very religious terms. They call you know this she's like a bishop or this other kind of a thing and oh yeah, oh yeah she really does it and she preaches. It's very can I ask weird you, and great. Can I ask you is Jesus involved in any no, way? No, 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 no. Is there a Lord and or Savior involved in any way? I haven't dug in that deep. I think that the construct is very similar, but I mean, I you had me at beautiful pictures of people sleeping and why am I not doing more of this? So it, it was just so interesting that it was presented as a way of reclaiming power, that turning off was a move was a power move and to me that was kind of interesting enough to keep reading and I'm not much of a blog reader but anyway I just found it I found it wacky and great so nap the it's I think it's the nap ministry let me see if it's what it actually I like said. the the nap like ministry.com turning off to gain power I like that idea yeah. especially now when turning on makes everything makes you crazy so to turn off is the best way to reboot and you don't isn't that what you do at night anyway and isn't that what I do with my kids when I take away their devices so they can become human again and isn't that I've, the whole point and I felt on a very very um surface level because I haven't spent any time with this thing I felt as if she was adding in a layer of black ownership over this where it was if to say we don't have she was proclaiming herself you know I am the deity that says this is okay I am the goddess that now says to you, listen, black people, your job is to not do. Your job is to step away and to recharge and to sleep and to make no bones about it and have no guilt about it and to not worry about the money. Not, you know, this is for you because not only do you deserve it, you need to treat this like a sacred act. And to me, it sounds like black self-care. Well, It, which it was is- just the whole thing of it. The way that it was positioned was like, ooh, that's kind of interesting. So I liked it. But have I slept? No. Do I do it? No. Am I doing what I need to do to make myself better? No, no, no. That's I can't do that. <laughs> it's a hard noise. That's a well, hard noise I am you. white. Maybe I need to find the right. Maybe I didn't get to far enough to see that if it had to do with if it really was a racial thing. I thought it was great, so I'll go back and read some more. The nap ministry and and I will honor you with a nap. Hopefully today. <laughs> hopefully sometime today. Perfect. Uh, my favorite segment on this show has become. Whose is whose? Oh, there's not more. There's not more. Did you toothbrush it there again? Is. No, this time it was a loofah. Dear listener, if your husband with whom you share a shower says to you, wait, which loofah is yours? Burn the house down and start okay, over. Okay, wait a minute. I got, I, I'm not going to revisit the fight that I heard on season one from hosts that I am not about loofah, but I am going to clarify for any who may be confused. When you say loofah, you mean mm. something that appears like a bath liquid soap puff. Yes? Yes. yes. It is a puff yes. that yes. holds yes. your liquid yes. soap and then hits every orifice of your body when cleaning everything. Well, I got news for you. We only have one in there and it's mine. And keep your hands the fuck off it. And here's the problem in my house. My fucking husband, I learned after the fact. It's not, yeah, it's not okay. I learned after the fact that he took the fucking loofah and cleaned the shower with it like a fucking sponge when I was putting it on my delicate baby lady bits. Yes, yes, you Clorox asshole. Yes, this went on for three fucking showers before I realized this ain't a fucking sponge, man. How did you realize it? Because it smelled like, uh... I'm going to leave that up to your imagination. I thought, is oh, there something no. Is there something going on with this soap? Is there something going on with this soap? Wow, my goodness. Oh. How long did he live outside of your house after this? <sighs> there are some among our number who would have the cognitive delay to look into this microphone and say, at least it's cleaning the shower. Yeah, I'm going to kill no. you. 
I mean, no. 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 Thank you for the no. no. Thank you for no. the no. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. I, yeah. My I pod won't let... is sacred. <laughs> That's where I store my long That's hairs. Right. No, 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 no. That shit just. So it is thrown away. Thrown away. Yeah. So it is important. So you said you'd brush your teeth with his toothbrush, but it is important <laughs> that if you're cleaning your lady bits. It just occurred to me that's gross both ways. I don't want Clorox in certain places, and I really don't want other things wiped all over the glass of the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am clean, but lordy. <laughs> don't you have a squeegee in your shower? We do, yeah, too, actually. So he would use it to he, get a little friction going and then he would he's he's very he's a he's a wonderful type. Yeah, he would spray that shit and then with the thing and then he has shower problems anyway because I have super long hair and when I wash my hair to get the water out of it, you like pull your hand through the length of the hair and it goes thwap, all the water comes out like wringing out a towel and that inevitably creates splatter spots on the glass of the shower, which he somehow can't abide. It is not, you know, symbiotic with life. So Splatter is squeegee. Splatter is not let me use an abrasive sponge on, oh my God. He gets in there, awful. he gets in there with the Never Windex, the, the, the wig white, whatever the stuff is that you spray it on and it sheets clean and it's meant for your car. He uses car products on the glass in the shower. It's the strangest thing. If the glass in the shower is cleaner than uh, like the the glass on your glasses. Does that mean that's what got in your lady bits because it was in your sponge? I really I really think we need to move on to the next who's is who. Are your lady bits squeaky clean and and crystal I started clean out that way. I started out that way. I started out that way with my polished lady knob. Let's go on to who's is who's, please. All right. So who's is who's? It's a big deal if you are sharing. <laughs> A loofah sponge, ah, correct. Yes, right? yes. I don't want your hairy ass bits on any part of me. On any part of me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, toothbrush, yes. Loofah, no fucking way. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> underwear. My husband and my son kind of wear the same underwear. And Colors. when you know I'm do doing, and when I'm doing laundry, it's yeah. So it's mostly by color. But does it really matter if his underwear winds up in his drawer? Son, father, son? It does. It happens in our house and it matters. And it's super gross. And I, there's no way around it. We've just decided to buy different brands. That's the only way to do it. So um, you get this brand, you get that brand. And that's tough. So, and daddy gets a third brand. So, yes, daddy gets the. Tommy John. A good brand. The Tommy John MeUndie level. Oh, oh, and now, and now, uh, Petey, of course, is interested. I want Tommy John. <laughs> yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, get a uh, job. But yeah. the answer is absolutely no fucking way are you getting expensive underpants because you're a fucking kid. We have the world's hardest who's who's problem with socks because they uh. all have, they all have the same, technically socks are made for imbeciles so once you get to a size you know nine through 13 shoe they're all the same they don't there are no differentiation and all all four have is it four one two three is that right yeah four. there's four all four yeah. of them have nine through 13 shoe so that's there's one sock size and the myriad differences in socks it just doesn't work. Uh, socks are such a huge pain in my ass. I can't even explain to you because they all look exactly the same. And then they will have, they go to the effort of stitching in L and R. So now I have to match up left and right with the large versus the extra large versus the off white versus this filthy white that goes with the ugh, socks. And there's more. I had a friend who did this before, counted how many, she counted more than um, 360 pairs of socks in her house. And she was like, that's too many. That's Ooh. more than we need. Pairs. Pairs. You have pairs? Yeah. And I and I nice. thought, oh, wow. If I counted that many, I'd probably have that many per person. And that's too many. It's too many. Yeah. So my theory became with laundry, you'll do your own laundry. So whatever you put in there, you'll take back out. So you know what's yours. But it really never worked that way because I want the laundry and they put one in and it's still sitting there four days later and I need to do laundry. So 
I now have to run yours over again because the whole house smells like mildew. rectum. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I had, or that, or mildew. <laughs> wow. You you're washing that loofah, I see. Yeah. It's stinky. It's gross. I'm, I'm really mad at your husband now for using it to clean the shower wall. Oh, my wall. God. The only thing worse, just to bring it all back to my putt again, the only thing worse is when I was <laughs> chopping uh, habanero peppers and then I went to the bathroom. Zing! That shit hurt. That's why you don't cook. That's why it's there's no washing your hands after that one, man. It's you, the oil stays on your hands and and then you go to clean yourself with your loofah and, and then you, you have scream, Clorox wipes and then you in scream there. for days. Yeah, it's it's that was a frightful scene. That's awful. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah. Um, I when he asked me and he had the dumb look on his face <laughs> about the loofah, I said I went right onto Amazon and I got three gray ones and then three colorful ones and I said yours are always gray you will always have a gray loofah don't ever touch a loofah if it has a hint of a tint to it you cannot have it gray is your loofah he's colorblind so it's kind of a problem is he really yeah wow okay all right yeah okay I mean I kind of wish those glasses for him but uh, you'll be fine he's so he can't be a fighter pilot you'll be all right he'll be fine right um, last week we started a game which was not successful. Not successful? Why is that? Nobody said anything? Yeah, it was kind of like crickets. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys don't want to play with us, if you don't want to engage. You got plenty to say when we say something stupid, so maybe we should stick to saying stupid things? I don't know. I haven't been on the line. I don't go online very much. I find that... Uh, Lots of things, lots of uh, social channels are shifty. And by that, I mean they are shifting right now. They're getting shifty. A lot of the anal- um, algorithms are changing. So not everybody sees everything all the time. And I'm not making excuses for anybody. It's just people think I've seen things online that I haven't seen. So I don't know. Maybe we weren't unsuccessful in driving people to a page that they didn't encounter otherwise. Look- I can't drive you there. <laughs> I can just offer things. But if you need a ride, call Uber. Okay. I cannot drive you there. I am grateful that you listen. And haha, we see signs that you listen. But if you don't want to engage with us, besides having super crazy hurt feelings, I'll get Then we got it. a special loofah just for you. Yes. Uh, both of our husbands have used them. And you get to pick. That could be our poll It's from the Trump administration. It's soaked in bleach. So you're going to be able to use Oof. it anywhere you wish. Yours was cleaning the shower. That's that's our poll question this week, I suppose. <laughs> Whose loofah would you rather <laughs> would you rather use? Amy's husband's loofah or Amy's loofah that was used on on the shower squeegee to be post sorry pre squeegee or Melissa's husband's loofah that was used, used on in, Melissa's husband. Right. <laughs> So your choice, dear listener, or again, once again, you could choose not to engage. Um, Please do engage with us on all the social media at Listen Brilliant. Please also feel free to write us brilliantobservations at gmail.com. We are trying to consolidate our social media. If you are a social media guru, that's not how you say it. It's guru. Um, Please feel free to say, you guys are batshit crazy. Give me your passwords. I'll put it all together for you. And we will feel uncomfortable giving out our passwords. But as soon as we do, we'll change them. And you can consolidate that for us. No offense. No offense, mom. No offense. That's what Ethan says. It's a struggle. I mean, it's a struggle. I I am coming off. I'm post-birthday. So I'm like post-coital right here. (laughs) I'm post like super elated from... All the love, good, and I'm going to choose to embrace that as then I spread my wings and and cast it to you, who is also going to be experiencing a birthday next week ish. I guess, yeah. I don't a week and a half. Yeah, yeah, sometime, sometime in this year. Sometime, sometime in this year, I will. Every year, I think. So, <laughs> dear listener, if you would like to share some birthday love with our Fugazi. <sighs> Please feel free to reach out and do that as well. She missed a really big party last <laughs> year. This year, which was our makeup year, it's it's in the shitter once again. And mm. for the big 5-2, I see us gathering in North Kakalaki. Hey, fan-fucking-tastic! 
I love it. Thanks for listening. We love you. Love you more. Bye. Bye.